So I bought another meter to test. Uh, this is the uh, Toolkit RC watt meter. And I've seen this for years um, on Amazon and AliExpress and Banggood and stuff like that. Um, but it's kind of expensive. I think it's like 30 or $40. Um, but, you know, it does have like a full digital LCD display. And um, I decided it's time to test it out. So I haven't even opened it. Let's uh, cut it open. Now, Toolkit RC is a very respected brand. So, um, you know, this is... This should be, you know, should be pretty, pretty good and, and um, you know, should do what it says it, it should do, unlike some other brands. Um, you know, nice packaging. Let's see what we got here. It's a small, I have to say, it's smaller than I thought it was going to be. I mean, this is the whole box. Um, definitely smaller than I thought the meter was going to be. And there it is. Um, pretty nice packaging. Um... Yeah, there it is. It has a little jog dial um, for switching screens and stuff like that. Uh, what is this? 12 gauge wire. So it says it's rated for 150 amps, but uh, you know probably shouldn't put 150 amps to 12 gauge. Um, you know, probably 50, 60 amps through 12 gauge at the most. Um, you know, you could you could spike to 150, but I wouldn't do continuous through at at 150 on 12 gauge. So, anyways. I need to um, throw some XT60s on this on this uh, meter, and then uh, we can do some testing with it and see how it goes. Okay, this meter is wired up. The screen's a little dirty now since I was uh, soldering it, but I've put double XT60s on both sides, and I do that on all my meters because sometimes when I'm plugging in things, I don't know whether I'm going to be plugging into a male or, or a female, so. For testing purposes, I always install double XT60s and it's incredibly handy having double XT60s. I just soldered these in with my big soldering iron. I must admit, I probably should have crimped them since soldering together three 12 gauge wires is um, tough to say the least. But um, we're all ready. So uh, this is the source side. So I'm going to plug in, this is from my power wall. So I'm going to plug in this from my power wall. And there is the display. Very nice. Um, interesting that we're pulling 0.3 amps. I don't know what's 8 watts. I mean, I guess the meter's pulling 8 watts just just standing by. But um, um, interesting. It, it's pretty cool. This ha It actually has a graph, a running graph of your power consumption. And then... Um, and there's your your capa your total capacity time on. Uh, the display is beautiful. I mean, this is this is very nice. Now let's see what the jog wheel does. If I jog, oh. Okay, this can also um, so this jog wheel here, this can also um, uh, control um, servos, and this is the um, servo pulse control. You can see it's changing the pulse control for the servo. So we don't care about that. Now let me press in the button and see what happens. Interesting. I was expecting that to be a, a I was expecting that to be a a a push um I was expecting that to change menus, but actually all it does is lock in. And I'm guessing actually maybe that's a safety feature. Um maybe you set the pulse and then you lock it in so that you can't change. Here's the menu. Let me see here. Turn the knob. Yep, yep. That's purely a safety feature. It doesn't pushing it in doesn't actually do anything. That's how you. So you set the pulse you want for the servo, and then you lock it in, and now it's it's locked. But we don't care about that. So actually, I might as well lock it in because I guess I'll never use the jog wheel. So this is just the only screen we will ever see. Um, I am going to hook it up to this uh, cheap um, inverter that I just made a video on and how much I hate this thing. But uh, for, you know, for testing purposes, we'll use it. Let me just rig this up quickly. Okay, 
so let's plug this in. Okay, that's in, uh, yes, the inverter is on. You can see now we're pulling uh, like 13 watts and you can see it's graphing. Let me bring this up. You can see it's graphing that 13 watts. Um, so, uh, two, uh, let me do a couple things. Okay, so the load I'm going to plug in is an electric fan because it should pull a couple hundred watts and that'll be a fine test. So, let's plug this in here. Okay. Okay, this is the lowest setting. And, uh... Actually, what is... Um, okay, so there it's graphing. We are pulling... Uh, like 3 amps. I have to say, this, this display refreshes so quickly, you can't read. You can't read the display, I have to say. Um, it's, it's, and it, you know, I wonder if it's because I was complaining that this thing kind of does, um, it's not a very good, um, it's not a very good uh, pure sine wave. Um, it's much closer to modified sine wave. And I wonder if that's what's causing the, the power fluctuation. Um, because it's, it's, it's jumping around so much. I wonder if that's because of the, um, because of how this thing works. Let me turn this all the way up. Okay, now we're pulling max, max draw, hitting uh, four amps there, 100 and sort of 20 watts over there. It is actually a little more consistent, but honestly, I feel like the display refreshes too quickly. Um, yeah, I honestly feel like the display refreshes too quickly because... Uh, let me zoom you in so you can see what I'm seeing. You can see how quickly that display is refreshing. You can barely get a read of, of how much it's pulling. Um, but again, I do now I am wondering if it has more to do with the, uh, the inverter than anything else. But I have other ways of testing this, so we might have to do that. But um, let's do another test quickly. I'm going to unplug the fan. I'm actually going to plug in a second meter in line. And then plug this in here. Okay, let's plug in this second meter. And let me zoom you in a little bit. Bird. It's actually interesting. This other meter is also jumping around a lot. Now it doesn't jump as quickly as this one, but yeah, look at the wattage usage jumping around out of this other meter. I haven't really seen that before. I, I think it's this inverter. I think this inverter is pulling. Um, yeah, I think this inverter is just uh, the way it, it, it's not a pure sine wave signal and the way it's um, chopping the, the incoming DC, it, it causes it to read high, low, high, low, high, low. Very interesting that they're both reading like that. Um, let me find a different inverter and see if I can get this thing to read a little better. Okay, I have hooked up my reliable pure sine wave inverter. This is a this is a good sine wave inverter and I'm hoping it'll have a cleaner signal and but we will watch these two meters and we will we will see uh, what they say let me get these in frame for you this top meter is kinda hard to read on camera but I think you can both see now let me turn it on wow what a difference look at how stable the wattage draw is now the, I mean this is 120 watts this is 110 watts so there is a difference but look how stable 
the wattage draw is. What a difference between meters. Wow, that's crazy. Um, now, let's figure out which one is more accurate. I've always thought this one was off a little bit. Okay, so what I have done is I have both meters here and I have actually just rewire, a re, let me zoom you out a little bit. I have redone the wiring here so that I am running the current through my um, power wall meter as well so we can get a third reference for, um, for um, amperage. Um, so let's turn on this inverter here. And now, uh, let me zoom you in. Um, you can see this graph here is showing a nice consistent current draw. Um, actually, this is wattage, so a nice consistent wattage draw. Um, it's saying we're pulling 120 watts. This says 110 watts. Um, and this is saying 3.8 amps and this is saying uh, 4.1 amps. I can tell you that my power wall meter says 4.08 amps and this is 4.1 amps. So this is accurate um, and syncs up with my power wall meter. Um, I always felt this one read off a little bit, um, but I think there is a way to calibrate this one and I need to open it up and see if there is a way to calibrate it but uh, this one does appear to be accurate, so that's nice. Um, yeah, um, it's interesting that how stable the wattage draw is now with this other inverter. Again, just goes to show you how garbage that other inverter really was. So I just opened this one up and uh, there is actually no way to calibrate it. Um, you can't even see the, the internal board because the screen has been soldered over the the internal board so even if there was a pot there's no way to get to it so unfortunately this cannot be calibrated um, this meter does appear to be accurate and and I do like it I wish my only complaint about it is if you've got this fancy screen and everything like that why is there not a way to maybe have a couple other displays um, you know you have a fancy LCD screen and you got a knob and everything like that but there's no way to, to put any other displays on the screen um, I feel like that's a little bit of a letdown. Um, but the meter is accurate. It's rated up to 150 amps at 50 volts. If you use this for below 6 volts, you actually use the USB to power it. Um, but above 5 volts or above 6 volts, 6 volts to 50 volts, it is uh, self-powered and it just gets its power right off, right off, the, um, off the incoming uh, um, source power. Um, yeah, I like this meter. I will use it, definitely use it in future videos since it is actually easier to read than this one and this one's slightly inaccurate. You know, this one I'm sure is fine at higher amps, but at lower amps um, it is a little inaccurate and this one does seem more accurate, so I think this will become my, my new meter in the future. So, uh, hope, uh, hope you like the video and um, hope this is helpful if you're looking for a, you know, a testing meter.